today we're going to look at a bunch of gerbils. I would normally say a family, but this is beyond family. This is just a whole lot of gerbils. And one of the nice things about gerbils is usually they're very sociable. In fact, families sometimes get the third generation in one cage, sometimes even more, and everybody helps taking care of the children. So we were very fortunate today to have two separate litters of baby gerbils that we brought home. Moving a mother with babies is not something I usually try to do, but with gerbils they are such steady parents that I decided it was worthwhile. So we have a very pretty little mother gerbil over here, and we have not only her babies, but also some babies from another mother that were born two days ago. So before we do anything else, I thought we'd start with looking at what a baby gerbil looks like. This little baby is only two days old. You can still see its little umbilical cord attachment. That would be a belly button. You can see its little tail. You can see where its eyes are going to be. And its little ears will start to grow shortly too. It's very tiny at this age and very dependent on a mother gerbil because it's nursing just like every other mammal does. This little group is the mother's own litter and they're not quite 10 days old because their eyes are gonna open. Honey, I know you wanna wiggle, but let's stay still for just a minute so everybody can look at you. There, there you go. Their eyes are gonna open in another day or two. You can see their little ears starting to stand up. You can see how much more active they are at this age. And they're just waiting for those eyes to pop open so they can see where they're going. Doesn't mean they don't go because it's unusual to have them all in the box at the same time. They normally are gonna start moving around just like this one is and exploring their world. The mom may or may not put them back. Mom may or may not stop and nurse them, but in any event, she will take care of them very nicely. What you see that she's made a nest out of is actually kale, which is a vegetable that's very nutritious that I like to feed to all of our animals. Now I have another bunch of gerbils that I brought home. We're going to talk a little bit about colors in gerbils. And this may not look like a whole lot of gerbils, but there's quite a few in here. Gerbils are animals that love to tunnel. They love to dig through things and make tunnels. If there's anything that's a tunnel, they'll climb into it. So let's see how many gerbils we actually have in this cage. Anybody else in there? Oh my goodness, yes. And the reason we have this lovely assortment is because in breeding gerbils in captivity, many different color mutations have been developed. One of the nice things about gerbils is they do have a tail so that you can pick them up by the tail because they're very quick and hard to get. Once you have one at home for a pet, chances are you're going to have it crawling into your hand. But I always hold on to the tail of a gerbil because these little guys with their powerful hind legs jump very well. And I really don't like chasing them around the floor. This color pattern, which is a very sandy brown, is what you would see in the wild, with the exception of the white little splash there, that tells me this gerbil probably has more than just plain brown genes. She has, in fact, been breeding, and her children are in the cage. And as you see, they're all different colors. I put one or two others in simply because I wanted you to see the different color patterns. This was the first color pattern that we had in the pet industry early on. And that was in the 70s, in the early 70s. All of a sudden, we started seeing little black gerbils. Till then, all we had was brown ones. They'd come into the pet trade in the roughly the 50s or 60s. Um, and everyone until the 70s was brown. Then all of a sudden, here come some black gerbils. This little black gerbil is not only black, but he's got that spot pattern that the adult does. And so he's not just a plain black gerbil, but a spotted black gerbil. Not heavily spotted, but very pretty anyway. Once we got black ones, then all of a sudden we started having 
all different other color patterns. And so we have this lovely creamy red color. And if you look closely at the eyes, you'll notice that they are pink. And so this little gerbil has no melanin or black pigment that would cause the eyes to be a color, whether blue or, or brown or black. So this would be called an eno. It's not an albino because it does in fact have some color to it. It's not all white. This guy, which looks almost the same, but look closely at his eyes and what you see is black eyes. And this little guy is not an eno. So he would be a dark eyed red and he's actually a very cute little gerbil, I think. Um, he is, well, actually it's a she, um, <laughs> is one of the prettiest of the group. And let's see if we can find one that is a little different. And that's this one, which is a bit lighter, but also black eyes. And see how important it is to hold on to something. We're never going to hurt them by holding on to their tail, but we certainly don't lose them either. But what I want you to see, which may or may not be easy, is the difference in the spacing in the ventral part. Okay, this, this little gerbil has the parts under the tail close together. This one has them farther apart, and they're the same age. They're from the same litter. And the ones that have the ventral parts farther apart are boys. The ones that have them closer together are girls. So this cute little thing with the dark ears and the darker tail is in fact a boy. And the pretty red one, also with black eyes, is a girl. So this would be a pair. And it's not uncommon for people to take home a boy and a girl from the same litter and have them in a cage together and then they raise babies. And so if there are any recessive genes in their chromosomes, sometimes you will come up with a new color pattern, which is really exciting. Actually, these babies come from a science project that a young man in my area started by taking home two gerbils, actually three gerbils, two girls and a boy. And he has tracked the color patterns, the sexes, and everything else about these little gerbils to determine uh, what the genetics is. And I'm actually looking very much forward to the possibility that he will become a researcher that's involved with small animals because he's doing a really nice job. Interestingly enough, his parents, who were very cool to the idea initially, are now so excited about this gerbil project that his father can't wait to come in and show me the next production of baby gerbils. And because I feel it's my responsibility, I take all these baby gerbils and I find a new home for them. So one of my jobs as a retail pet store is to see to it that pet animals have good homes. And I feel it's my responsibility to do that. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment in the cage. You may notice that I pulled the wheel out when it was squeaking. Well, all wheels squeak. Even though the ones say they don't squeak, they're gonna squeak. Gerbils, on the other hand, are not nocturnal animals like hamsters. Gerbils are diurnal. They're active during the day. So you don't have the problem of a squeaky wheel at night in your bedroom. So it's not uncommon for gerbils to be happy in a bedroom with a family and the hamsters are the ones that get kicked out for the squeaky wheel at night. So we'll put this wheel back in for them to, to run on if they want to. And we'll look at what we have in the bottom of the cage. The bedding material is very absorbent, but for gerbils that's really not as important as it is for most other animals because they have only a drop or two of urine a day. They use very little water. So I didn't even bother to bring a water bottle home. I do put a water bottle in the cage, but if I have something like kale or carrots in the cage with them, gerbils will get enough moisture from that that they don't need to have water. I, as I said, always have a water bottle in a cage with my babies, but I don't worry about it because they will definitely not drink water if they have veggies to eat. Their diet, very important,
is the rodent chow that you would feed in a research laboratory. We call it lab blocks. And they chew on this, and that's tremendously important because gerbils do have teeth like other rodents that grow all the time, and consequently, you need to have them chewing on something so the teeth don't overgrow. This one's real cute, isn't it? It's a pink-eyed animal, so it's an eno, and it's got a beautiful silver coat. Very pretty little girl. I guess we'll leave the wheel out if we want to talk any more about gerbils because they do, in fact, enjoy running on a wheel, and that'll squeak the whole time we're talking. How fast do they go back into the tube? You saw how many we have. Oh, look, they're all disappearing. They love to climb into tubes. They enjoy it tremendously. These guys originated in the Mongolian desert areas adjacent to the Gobi Desert, and so they really evolved in a neighborhood where there was not a lot of moisture available. Now, if we have more babies born in a cage, if I have a number of females and one has a litter and a few days later or a few weeks later another one has a litter, it's not uncommon for the mothers to raise their babies together just as if it was a commune. They take care of the babies together. The older siblings will help take care of the babies. Did we lose all of our gerbils in this cage? I guess we did. You saw how many they were and they all fit into the tube. And we've got the big one up the end here with her little head sticking out, <laughs> very happily sleeping while everybody else is crowded into the other end of the tube. So gerbils as pets, wonderful. Low urine output, therefore the cage stays much cleaner than with many other animals. I still would like to clean it once a week, but you know what? If you can get away with it, sometimes two weeks is okay also. Uh, food, everything you're eating in small amounts, especially vegetables, and lab blocks for the staple diet. Things to chew on, very important because the teeth grow all the time. Caging, a 10 gallon tank is lovely for gerbils. The footprint of a 10 gallon tank is 10, 10 by 20, and so it fits on most bookcases very easily. If I'm going to use a water bottle, or if I have other pets in the household, a sturdy screen lid is essential. Gerbils that get out will chew everything. My daughter can testify to that because her gerbils got out and in the four hours that they were out managed to eat two sheets and a bedspread. We do keep locks on the lids of our cages. And these are the clips that I like because I can Attach that to the lid, swing it down under the rim of the tank, and I've got a nice secure lock. I usually put one of these clips on either side of the water bottle and another one at the far end of the cage. Lots of people want to put their food in a bowl. I brought two bowls home with me. This one is very pretty, but it won't last because the gerbils will chew it. This is a little ceramic bowl. This will last. And if you want to put the food in that, that's fine. But as you notice, the food in this cage is distributed all over the floor. The gerbils will take it out and move it around with great enthusiasm. So secure screen lid, a cage that they cannot chew. 10 gallon tank is my absolute favorite because I can keep it clean. I know when an aquarium is clean, when I'm emptying it out, I can see through the glass and it will last forever, and the gerbils will not get out. Plastic cage, they can chew. And so please, none of the habitail, habitrail or other plastic cages for gerbils. The folks that buy those and put gerbils in them come into the store holding their hand over the last hole that the animal has chewed and hopes that they can get the animals into the store before they climb out and run around the car also chewing things. As with any other rodent, they're perfectly happy chewing wires. And that's hard on the electricity in your house. Gerbils are great. Consider them as a very easy to care for pet, a very interesting pet. They live around three or four years, which is a nice lifespan for something this small. You can raise them and have a marvelous time with your gerbils, building tunnels for them, building houses for them, 
doing all sorts of things with gerbils that make excellent pets. We hope you have enjoyed this. I know that some of you think that picking up an animal by its tail is not okay, but in fact it is. It works very conveniently to be sure you have control over them. So anytime you're handling an animal, be sure you're handling it safely. And holding the tail, which is a nice furred tail on a gerbil, is one of the best ways to keep control of them. Thanks so much for visiting, and we hope to see you again on the Animal Exchange YouTube channel.